Thanks so much for tuning in to another edition of the Bloody Legends with Jai That Aussie Metal Guy and Jim Taylor. Make sure you're a bloody legend and hit that like and subscribe so you can keep up to date with all the great content from these bloody legends. G'day, hey, how you all going? It's time for another edition of the Bloody Legends with myself, Jai, that Aussie metal guy, and my amazing co-host, JB, Jim Taylor. And today, tonight, wherever you are in the world, it is with the greatest pleasure that we have the almighty Elias Soriano from Nonpoint. Cheers for joining me, my friend, who is in the middle of renovations. He's got his drill, mate, so he's ready to drill it in. Indeed, indeed. Uh, Who needs to get screwed? Uh, I don't think we need to get screwed. I think all the governments are doing that for us, prospectively, wherever we bloody are, my friend. (laughs) Well well played, sir. Well played. (laughs) Huzzah. First off, mate, it's great to catch up with you. Talk about the latest single, um, Underdog, and the tour that you've recently announced with Blackstone Cherry, my friend. How have things been for Nonpoint? I know you've been flat out. Yeah, wonderful. Just uh, nonstop. Uh, just got off tour with Head PE and Dropout Kings. That was a lot of fun. Um, hit the ground running as soon as I got home. Had to drive my daughter and my cat down to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So a nice little two-day, 22-hour drive um, to get here and renovate my grandparents' home, uh, who nice. uh, uh, passed away not too recently and uh i just recently and and i'm sorry um, sir left left me the house so i'm i'm uh wow I'm, i was wondering if uh if I, florida was was where i was going to end up and the universe put me right back here right back there no worries cool. yeah that's i'm pretty sorry to hear about that about your grandparents as yes, well though, mate. that's pretty pretty bloody sad i know it's, it's tough, okay they live oh they lived long wonderful lives my my grandfather was one of the most hilarious people uh, I had ever known in my entire life. He annoyed the shit out of my grandmother. Um, it was great to watch. Uh, he's, he's singing Spanish salsa music at the top of his lungs, literally stopping her in the middle of like talking just to dance. Um, he he was a he was a hilarious hilarious person, um, and a, and a great grandpa. And then my grandma was like the coolest grandma ever. Uh, she made sure that every single night before we went to bed, it was milk and cookies uh, out of the same uh, very rusty container of Nestle Quick. It was it was the old school metal containers of Nestle yes. Quick that, that you open with a spoon or a butter knife. Um, and uh, she just liked to refill that same container. It was the most horrifying thing ever. I'm sure I have lead poisoning or or or, or tetanus or something from the rust right. I drank uh, in in my childhood. But uh, uh, they were wonderful people, wonderful people, and uh, I'm gonna take care of this house. Uh, sure. my, most definitely. Uh, can you talking about your grandparents and the salsa and everything? Can you tell me a little bit about kind of who influenced you, Elias's earliest? Yeah musical you know memories and that tell us a little bit about your earliest musical memories that kind of built you up to be the musician that you are today you know uh a very very well-known musician uh, 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 an, an artist an artiste dare i say uh very revered Nicki minaj said this uh you know oh. right now music is it, music is is popular. It's about popularity. It's more of a yeah. popularity contest. Uh, labels are signing. Uh, you know, you live or, or you die by your follower count even before you get it on the label. So, you know, I Ooh. think the minimum I was like 50,000 followers um, or something like that. I, you, you have to have. Uh, and it's, it's a time where, you know, you're watching artists that are more talented than those artists that have more followers right. getting dropped. And it it's really showing you that, you know, the music industry is, is really beginning to change and it's becoming uh, more brand weighted and really uh, uh, it's, it's really not so much about the music anymore. Um, the music is mm-hmm. cool. And, and you, you gotta have a snappy tune. Obviously you can't be shitty, <laughs> but right. But, right. Uh, there's talent that's slipping through the cracks because um, it's it's hard to get fifty thousand followers these days. You know, it's 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 yeah. and for you to 
to rest, uh, you know, live or die by that is, is, uh, is it's a it's a different time so on that when i was growing up uh it was it was classic rock you know 60s 70s uh you know you had your boston's your uh journey your you know bad companies your uh, sure. uh, uh james taylor your sabbath your uh pink floyd you know all these all right. these bands uh that that really developed and had a unique uh uh footprint and um, you're starting to get less and less of that. So when I grew up, the reason that my music is the way it is, and probably some and somewhat to our detriment, you know, song to song, you never know what you're going to get from Non Point because that's that's what I grew up on. You know, uh, the one this journey song, even though it was a journey song from this song to this song, this song, you know, lights is completely different than faithfully. You know. Um, oh yeah. So so I I I believe that you know I I really credit the talent the Doobie Brothers, uh, Motown, uh, Earth Wind and Fire, the Commodores, Otis Redding, um, you know those are the people that really kind of taught me uh, what good music was and and I I am handing this knowledge over to my daughter who um, she could tell the difference she could tell the difference mm -hmm. now too. Noticing that, you know, those sexy red sells lots of records. Uh, yeah. She's no, she's no notorious B.I.G. You know, she's no Jay-Z. She's right. no, uh, rock, uh, you know, Eric B. or Rakim. She's no Mob Deep. She's none of these fucking people, man. The people that actually right. have flow. No Fonte. She's no, she's not even Drake, you know. And, and it's, 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 you know, letting that kind of uh, uh, artist, you know, grow just because they're a spectacle. Um, you know, there's, that's that's an influencer. That's not that's not really an artist to me. So I'm 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 proud mm -hmm. to say that I, in a time where you know the '60s, the '70s, even the '80s, where you had just great songwriting left and right, even if it was a one-hit wonder. You know, take on me. Oh man! Take me oh on. yeah! Aha uh -huh, was was brilliant, man. Culture Club, right? Uh, Depeche Mode, The Smiths, you know, Morrissey, you're you're talking about music that that uh that made you feel something. And yes. and uh that that's that's what drove me. Even coming to the nineties, kind of when you guys started around ninety seven, you know what I mean? That mm -hmm. the, the I feel like the music the scene was still there and kind of when you guys oh, yeah started and compared to now because yeah. you've been together like i kind of want to i've got two parts of this question but you've been together since 1997 you've had some mm -hmm. amazing highlights man and some some really great musical memories in your storied career but you've also managed to see this complete kind of 361 degree change owed to your record label as well to the music yeah. industry yeah. as well kind of you know what i mean the last how many years in your career kind of kind of from when you first started to now yeah it's it's definitely uh it's it it changes every 10 12 years i've seen it change oh. um you know tape and cd uh go to napster starting to rip music pirate bay we were all ripping that shit down ourselves um oh yeah getting, getting the viruses uh that's probably how it's done and russia's uh, you know taking out taking uh, our, our computers over um uh, but that's 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 um you know that's it, music is constantly changing delivery is constantly oh. changing um so you you, you as, as long as you keep writing good music i think you're going to be all right Oh, definitely, because Nonpoint have yeah. been a band that I've always come back to kind of ever since I started around that age because I was getting into Soil, Drowning Pool, Nonpoint, all those new metal <laughs> bands. Oh, at that time, you had Machine Head blowing up at well, that time. I've like, got the big Machine Head diving on the back of my neck. I was a huge... Yeah. The 90s yeah, were just well, totally Crisis. influential. Yeah, man, you had Earth Crisis. You had uh, uh, yep. so many dark hardcore bands. Like I said, Glassjaw, uh, mm -hmm. Sayasin. Um, you know, Circa, Dredge, Deftone, you know, there were so yeah. many unique rock bands coming up right now, yeah. uh, coming up at that time. You know, right now, you know, I, I was I was actually absolutely blown away 
by the Falling in Reverse show. That was like a fucking theater show, man. That music was so, so deep and intricate and mm-hmm. just great, great hooks and great song, but just like the guitar work and the vocal yeah. just uniqueness. I I was I was really happy to see that you know that that's doing so well. You know, I know the guy gets a lot of shit for 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 you know being so outspoken, but you know bands like like that bands like Slaughter to Prevail. I saw them live, oh, fucking insane. Um, bands like Dayseeker, absolutely blown away. Um, you know, there's a lot of really young upcoming bands that I really feel like are doing something different, and it's yep. and it's yeah. making me really excited about about what's coming. Yeah, falling in reverse or IP. I never heard much of them, and my brother-in-law kind of steered me onto them a few years ago, and then I listened to them, but I'd come back to them the last couple of years, and I've just, I kind of dove into the albums, and I was blown away by his kind of songwriting and the musical Bro, ability you know. of him as well, and that latest it, track, man, the single he does with our Alex Terrible and K, man, is absolutely yeah. bloody unreal, man. It's yeah. live. Uh, live at Rockville. It was un real that guy what he does with his voice his ability to rap like fucking lightning speed um his operatic parts that he just fucking throws in there just for the sake of throwing in there i just i think it's it's yeah. it's really fun to listen to and and um i haven't really been having a lot of fun uh uh in the in, in the recent couple of years listening to to new music outside of like maybe the the edm and the pop and the hip-hop space just because i felt like there were a couple pockets of like really underground uh with trill and 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 things coming out of the uk that i was getting excited about um you know in hip-hop and then all of a sudden rock just started hit me on tap me on the shoulder i started turning around going what the hell have i been fucking missing here man so it's 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 exciting it's insane yeah it really is and, yeah and the melodies that are happening these days and the different bands you would never see playing together like bring me the horizon from what they were what, what i loved them as deathcore now they're a pop band with metal influences now they're playing with baby yeah. metal and with uh different and that and that's crazy and and yeah. i feel but i feel you guys were ahead of that i mean not not i mean i i i had i had heard you before uh the miami vice soundtrack when when, when you did that and i was like check this out instead of playing that that song by the numbers you had these latin influences like Il Nino and like it was crazy dude to hear that so you yourself need to pat yourself on the shoulder because you, you you set that standard for bands to be inventive like that I think yep I, yeah it's you know um I I we definitely don't want to copy anybody so we we're, no we're, we're, you certainly you don't know, sir <laughs> yeah we, we 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 do our own thing this is this is the lane that we like, and uh, I think we're staying there. Uh, definitely, and it's a good lane to be in, Elias. Look, as I mentioned, you've been around since 1997. You've recently announced the Blackstone Cherry concert. You've played hundreds of shows and festivals, no doubt, all over the world, and probably got some really great memories and highlights. What are a couple that kind of stick out for you, my friend? Um, You know, recently playing Rockville, that was such a monumental show. And uh, playing in front of such a a, a massive crowd, um, you, when you can't see the back of the crowd, that's that's pretty uh, uh, that's pretty moving. And and I couldn't you imagine know, giving us thirty minutes is a bad idea, man. Because we're we're not <laughs> we're, it's gonna it's not gonna stop. I can go hard for thirty minutes. So, no doubt. You know we. we we tailored the set for that, and and um, I I I really felt uh, accomplished at Rockville. Yes, sir. 
that that was that was the 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 uh the moment in my life where i i looked i looked out and you know that's when i was that's when i i was okay to be like good job kiddo you fucking got that's it cool. all here <laughs> it's three in the afternoon you're on the main fucking stage and it just it went the fuck off it was it was outstanding brilliant that's that's got to be nuts and see that many people and be see hear people singing along to all the songs and all that that's yeah. as a musician yeah. that's got to that's that's the coolest in the world you know indeed man and then also to see uh -huh. these fans from like you know my age back from when you guys first started to this younger generation coming through now and, and discovering non-point as well it must be quite a buzz when you yeah. get to talk to these people over at the merch stands and stuff like that eh? Yeah, it's it's uh you know uh it's funny because even my crew as of late has been saying that we've been getting a lot more younger fans and a lot more mm -hmm. girls at at our shows. We we uh yeah. we normally like 80% guys, 20% girls and like the last <laughs> I'd say year and a half it's been like 60-40 that's so, and that's it. That's yep. what you want to be able to create a safe space for everybody to come to your bloody shows. You know what I mean? I know it's been, I've been, you know, I'm 44, so I've seen a lot the last mm -hmm. how many bloody years, but I'm really glad that there has been, everyone is starting to get more proactive on creating this equality in the bloody scene, you know, whether what sex you are what race you are what religion you are we all need to be able to go to these concerts and enjoy this place at a safe you know a safe space because we're all there to see the bands we bloody love yeah, yeah. it's it's there and, and and everybody's being very protective uh you know i watch it in the crowd myself um you know there's definitely a a a, a level of etiquette that's definitely uh been being pushed as of late, um, you know, safety and show quality is definitely uh, getting up there in, in, in priority for everybody. Yeah, damn straight. Don't go to a show and be a fucking asshole or don't even bother. <laughs> Nobody cares about karate. No yeah, one I know, dude. All these fucking right. punches. But, uh, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> and oh, man. I went to one um, about a year ago just before I was diagnosed, dude. And it was like some dude was sitting there slamming his fists around and like swinging at people. I was like, dude, back the fuck up a little bit, bro. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not here to, to break any bones. Uh, you know, people are crowd surfing. You know, you know, no, no closed fists, man. Just no, no crowd it. killing. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Tell us about the latest single, Underdog, man. That one is a ripping, ripping single. I've had an awful week. I put that yeah. one on this morning. It kind of really hit me in the feels, man. Tell me all about it. Uh, it is. Uh, it's 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 a story about our past twenty years and um, how we found ourselves uh, right now at, at 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 basically the peak of our career. It's it it's it feels like it feels brand new. Um, yeah. You know we've. We've really had a a, a a resurgence, like, you know, we it, it's funny because we never went anywhere. We were one of the bands that kind of, we've always been around. We've we've dropped ten records. Yeah. Um, you know, the the pandemic I think was the the longest that that anyone we've ever gone without a non point record. Um, but uh, you know, I I I just you know as of late we 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 just really feel like uh, we we have a good team. Um, we have a great plan and uh, it keeps scaling. So we're, we're, you know, we're, we're taking care of it as, as we should sure. uh, because this is growing. Yeah. Not many bands can say they've consistently released albums. I think almost every two years since, you know, since forming, you had statement back in 2000 development, 2002 recall, 2004, mm -hmm. you all get the idea people to the pain, vengeance, miracle, non-point return, the poison red X to the pain, the, the latest um, comp one. Like dude, not many bands are able to, to, to maintain that motivation and that drive and that energy and also that the group that she's have managed to keep together, you and Rob have been doing this since the start, man. So, you know, it's, no it, it's when you're doing it for 20 years, uh, you know, 
it, this this business isn't always built for everyone. Um, everyone has their own expectations of, of what to expect. Uh, but I feel like right now we have a, a lineup that uh, is really focused on what Nonpoint is all about, which is the show and, uh, you know, our groove and mm -hmm. really about uh, keeping that energy level, that sediment level uh, high and and motivating people to whether it be get through relationship problems, work problems, money problems, emotional problems, trying to work out. You need a six pack. You put in some non point. I think you're, you, you'll be good. Damn, damn yeah. straight. Tell us all about the label, 361 Degrees Records, man. What was the motivation for this? Tell where it came from. Tell everything you got there, mate. Yeah, uh, well, the the label was was uh, it was it was more purposeful than anything. We needed yep. to figure out a way to have an entity that we were going to be releasing our music through. Uh, we were shifting into the independent model. Uh, we got a great partner and distribution company, uh, a boutique company out of Sweden called Amuse. Uh, they're super amazing uh, with uh, mm -hmm. helping us leverage our catalog and and basically started. Uh, allowed us the opportunity to, to basically fund it on the front end coming out of the pandemic. Uh, so we had seed money that we were then able to shift and, and start building out a small team, um, creating the content, the videos, the music and everything that we wanted to uh, at the pace that we needed to, and then dropping in, you know, uh, 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 schedules that, that we felt like were, were going to help us compete at, at, at the, the tier that we needed to knowing what kind of budget we were working with. So um, with the label, we were able to, uh, you know, delegate and, um, you know, hold people accountable for, uh, you know, where things were going to execute and when they were going to execute. So uh, as long as you have a plan, as long as it's 70% there, you're going to figure out the other, uh, 30% by the time you're done. Oh, yeah. Do you feel like you have more control oh, yeah. over the, the non-point as as the band going forward? How has that been, being independent, you know, pushing oh. out, you know, not having that record label? You guys yeah. are the label to be able to do it. But also, if you want to bring other people on, you can support other bands in the scene as well because the, the state of the, right. the music scene is kind of fucking in this state of flux at the moment you got like as we mentioned like you know this uh, streaming platforms look at this fucking bald-headed tosser who's making billions of dollars off of other people's music as well but it's kind of you have to the state of the beast you have to go on and go onto these streaming platforms and you're basically making albums and music as an artist and giving it away and then hoping people support you mm -hmm. on the back end because the models change like it's I was talking to someone yesterday and they're like, oh, they're going on. What? Well, you get the bands to chuck in and we can do this. And I'm like, the bands aren't getting fucking paid. No one's getting money out of this scene at the moment. Like it's really <laughs> hard and they'll be able to do it. You got to play so many bloody shows, so many festivals. And that requires so much time away from family and home. And it creates yeah. all these well other problems as well. Unfortunately, it will eventually that bubble's eventually gonna pop and then eventually something's gonna happen. Um or the pool's gonna get smaller and the variety is gonna start to, you know, thin out. Um and it's already not too much variety right now. So uh mm -hmm. I just, you know, get out there and vote, people. Get out mm -hmm. there and vote. Right. Yeah, definitely get out there and fight. Bloody crazy time for you all over there in the US at the moment. Maybe you and Jim need to come to Australia for a fucking couple of months avoid. I, I think we should, sir. <laughs> hey, book me a ticket. I'll be there. Yeah, crazy, crazy bloody time. So so what's next for Nonpoint, man? Besides, you got the tour coming up. Have you got any more music? He's working on an album. What what's the future plans for Nonpoint, man? What else you got on us? We got we got the record that we're finishing up right now uh songs are every single day getting closer and closer to being uh finished um 
because we're independent. We're in no rush. And, you know, we right. want to make sure that good. Uh, we promised people that we would get them a full length, hopefully by the end of the year. And I think we'll be good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, another thing I've loved about Nonpoint is your fucking covers, man. You guys have done some ripping, right? ripping fucking covers, man. I remember hearing that Phil Collins one you dropped, man. I was just, that one was on repeat for me, I think, for about two fucking weeks. I'm going to put you on the spot here, man. If you could cover an, an Aussie artist, who would it be, dude? Australian. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, um, I know, I'll put you on the spot here, my friend. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, is Olivia Newton John? <laughs> yep, fuck yeah, I'll, yeah, hey man. I fucking, I'll take Olivia. I feel <laughs> like I could. She's got she's got great songs, and I feel like I could I could I could nail that. Oh, you could definitely nail that. You could definitely nail that. Look, this has been an absolute pleasure, Jim. Do you have anything else you'd like to throw in there, my no, friend? No, th this is, dude. This has been really cool, brother. I, I think you guys are amazing, and I'm gonna, I want, I want to say hi for, uh, from a mutual friend of ours, uh, and actually, uh, my collaborator and boss, uh, Mr. Morgan Rose. And, oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. I have, I have a project. I actually have a few. We're one of the shirts now. We have a couple projects together with our brother, uh, uh, Lenny, in Staten Island. Um, so to see you guys, you know, Morgan's a yeah. love Morgan. Oh, always dude. got a and and always a punch. Always oh, got a oh, smile. Dude. Always has the punchline yes. ready. Love Morgan. I discovered you guys uh, from when I first heard Seven Dust. I found you guys like kind of through them. So it was like down the rabbit hole we go, but dude, every album you've done has been just killer. And you guys are, I swear to God, one, one, uh, one of the hardest working bands in rock and it shows. <laughs> so <laughs> I think, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Definitely. It does show everybody go out, Chuck underdog in the stereo. If you haven't heard it, crank it up really loud. So the neighbors can hear it. They are going to want to hear it. You can catch non point. They are going on tour with Blackstone cherry from the 26th of July through to the 14th of August. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of festivals they've got coming up and later in the year, they're playing with soil, our friend soil head PE and our friends, the union underground yeah. dude. Um, so you can catch an on point all over the bloody place. Thank you so much, Elias. This has been an absolute pleasure, my friend. And I did have a little mm. bit of a tear to underdog this morning. Great track. Any last words, shout outs, thank yous you'd like to add in there, mate. Please uh, check out Underdog the video. I think it's our best video we've ever done. Um, it's uh, directed by and shot by Drew Johnston, a dear friend of mine. Uh, he was actually 16 years old coming to non-point shows and go 20 years later. And now all of a sudden he's on our bus filming and taking all those amazing pictures and all those amazing videos you guys are seeing. So if you like it, go check it out. Awesome. Cheers, mate. Thank you oh, very yeah. much. Cool. Oi, you're tuned in to Joy That Aussie Metal Guy, so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of his sick content.